Hey everyone, Ari here from DAT Bootcamp. Today I'm going to show you how to beat the hole punching section on the DAT. Now I actually have a problem in front of me right now. I actually have a sticky note and a hole puncher. These are going to be your two best friends learning how to beat this section. The easiest way to teach you this section is to show you what it's actually trying to do. You're presented with a square piece of paper. It's folded one to three times, usually three. So for example, I'm going to make one fold right here. And then it's going to be hole punched. And then your job is to mentally unfold this paper and see what it matches up to. So for example, for this problem, it's very, very simple. We would have this problem, we'd have one fold, a hole punch, and the answer choice would involve a hole in the top right and the bottom right. So here's an actual problem that you would see on the DAT. You see that we have three folds, one, two, three, and a hole punch. The dotted lines represent where the paper originally was. The solid lines represent where the paper actually is now. So for example, in this problem, let me get another piece of paper here. In this problem, this is what happened. From fold one, the top of the paper was folded down, like so. Fold two, the paper was folded up by the corner to the halfway mark. Fold three, the other corner was folded up. And then finally, in the last step, two hole punches were placed here and here. And this is what we're left with here. Now your job is to mentally unfold this piece of paper and see which of these answer choices lines up with the correct answer. All right, so on the real DAT, you won't have sticky notes and a hole puncher. So we're gonna use something called the grid method. We're gonna create a four by four grid. It kind of helps you because you actually get gridded paper in the uh, Prometric test centers. And then we're going to mark with an X wherever we see a hole. So for example, on this one, we see there's a hole here, there's a hole here. So those two holes correspond to right here and right here. Now you go fold by fold, and anytime you see a new hole appear, you just mark it on your paper. This way you're not trying to keep track of the holes throughout like three folds and then try to match it up to these answer choices. You just concentrate on making your grid for the answer problem, breaking it down, and then you match your grid up to one of the answer choices. So for this one, between fold three and fold two, we see the bottom left corner is folded up, right? There's a, there's still a hole right here, right? And this is where the fold occurred. So we can see if you unfold this, you would get a hole right here as well. So we're gonna mark this on our paper. There's a hole right here. Now between fold two and fold one, the same thing happens. There was a fold here and it was unfolded so there's a, fold going to, there's a hole going to appear right here. Now in fold one to fold zero of the original paper, we see that the top half was folded down on the bottom half. So all this is essentially just duplicated over to the other side. There's something called the line of symmetry method, which I'm going to link to in this video. And I think it's a really great strategy for being the hole punching section. But if you unfold this, you would see that there would be a hole here, a hole here, hole here and a hole here. That section, that step I just did corresponded to this section, this step. You saw that we had a fold here, 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 and here corresponding to these four holes and we just simply unfolded it. It's the same method, just you're, you're able to do this on the DAT. We can see that this grid matches up the answer choice C. All right, this is a problem I wanna to touch on. This is an example of a one-third fold problem. And these types of problems tend to give people a lot of trouble on the DAT, but they really shouldn't. I'm gonna break down how to solve them step by step. To start off, I already have one ready to go. To start off, we see in fold one, this piece of paper was folded over to this part right here. The reason 
these problems make, get people a little confused is because they're not used to seeing these type of folds. The fold crease actually occurs right in the middle of where the holes are supposed to be, like so. Fold two is easy. Fold two is this normal quarter fold. Fold three, again, is another one-third fold. Right between the crease, right here where the circles are supposed to be, it is folded down. Then the hole is punched. So unfolding this one, we remember we go backwards step by step. We go from fold three to fold two. We see that the only difference was that this top piece was folded down. The bottom was folded to the, the top was folded to the bottom. We're going to unfold it. And we're going to see that there's two holes now here. Now we're going to unfold from, uh, from two to one. And finally, we're going to unfold from one to zero. And we see that this matches up with answer choice B.